In business tonight, a local company is starting to make some key inroads into the export market with a specialty product. But some frustrating hurdles are threatening its viability. Ryan Broom has the story. A local manufacturer of sweet potato fries is reporting some success in terms of exports and sales. But the future of the sugar industry could play a role in their future success. Richard Armstrong is managing director of Armag Farms, which grows the sweet potatoes used to create sweet potato fries under the Sunbury Harvest brand. Mr. Armstrong says sales have been going well, but the uncertainty in the sugar industry is starting to impact on the sweet potato harvest. The future of the sugar industry is shaky to say the, to say the least. Um, unfortunately, there's been a lot of indecision. Um, a lot of timelines have been missed. And to put it in a nutshell, we are owed a hell of a lot of money for cane that we sold last year and for incentives that we haven't been paid for two, going back two years or even three years, uh, wages, rebates, and the list goes on. Um, the sugar cane is, as you all know, very important for us that, that grow a lot of rotation crops. Um, there's no way that we can, you, you can't plant sweet potato behind sweet potato. It has to have a sugar cane type crop to rotate with. He says with no alternative rotation crops to use instead of sugar cane, they tried experimenting with leaving the fields fallow, but it resulted in lower yields. He also says it is crucial that cane farmers in general get some clear indication on what will be happening in the sugar industry before planting time next year. Despite the ongoing challenges, the businessman says there are several opportunities to export the fries into the region and beyond. He says when workers at the plant gain HACCP accreditation by next February, they could start to enter the United Kingdom and Western European markets. Right now, the fries are becoming very popular. They're, they're almost every week we pick up a diff, uh, different restaurant, different hotel, um, even the two leading fast food entities in the island. One is using them already and one will start in the new year. So that's looking good. Um, we're trying to get into the Trinidadian market. That's, um, that's something that we can be sending samples down next week. I'm hoping to get one of the distributors down there to, to, to take us on. So yeah, uh, gradually people are realizing that the product is what we're advertising it as being a nice fresh product. It's, it's much more tasty than what the imports are. Reporting from Sunbury Plantation in St. Philip, Ryan Broom, CBC News. The head of one of the largest banks on the island believes the worst has passed for the Barbados economy, but the pace of recovery will be an important factor in determining growth. Rick Parkill, the chief executive officer of CIBC First Caribbean, made the observation in an interview with the Business Report. He said that CIBC First Caribbean is committed to Barbados and the Caribbean. We're starting to see a, uh, a modest pickup in private sector investment throughout the region um, and also in Barbados. Um, and that tends to be a leading indicator of uh, potential recovery. So um, things are not getting worse. Um, I think earlier in the year they sort of hit bottom um, in Barbados in particular. And uh, now the big question is going to be the magnitude of the recovery. And you can start to see that in our financial results, too, where the second half of the year, uh, we restored our profitability and started to grow again. And, you know, the fourth quarter uh, was a significant improvement from the fourth quarter of 2013. And Meanwhile, Mr. Parkhill says in terms of restructuring, the bank has already completed most of the layoffs it had planned after consultation with the relevant authorities and officials. We may have started our restructuring process earlier than the other banks and we're largely finished with that process right now. Uh, so uh, we announced our restructuring plan and, um, and had broad consultation with government and trade unions um, in the last quarter of 2013. So there's a little bit more to do in terms of the original plan that was, was announced, but um, most, of the, um, most of the job losses have already occurred and we we did bend over backwards for people that were in redundant positions to try to find them open positions um, in, in other places in the bank. And most of the people that did end up le leaving the bank left under a, a, volu a volunteer, or they, they volunteered to leave. And here now is a look at how stocks traded on selected exchanges across our region.